We're ready, depression. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 saddest SpongeBob moments. I'm ready, depression. I'm ready, depression. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're tearfully looking back at some of the most melancholic and heartbreaking scenes involving our little square dude from both the TV series and movies. We'd also like to dedicate this video to the creator of SpongeBob SquarePants, Steven Hillenburg, who tragically passed away in 2018. Warning, if you haven't seen any of these scenes, expect spoilers along with misty eyes. I'm not always as confident as I look. Maybe I better just go back and hide. Number 10, growing up. SpongeBob loves visiting his grandma, but when the townsfolk start teasing him for being a baby, he decides to grow up with no more baby stuff. Unfortunately, adult life isn't all that it's cracked up to be, and SpongeBob throws a hysterical crying fit wanting to be a baby again. <laughs> the rant is kind of hilarious to watch at first, but it gets progressively more upsetting because SpongeBob's convinced that he's too old for his grandma's kisses, and it's especially sad to those who are under the mindset that you're too old to enjoy the things you loved as a child. Take it easy, SpongeBob! <laughs> Fortunately, Grandma Squarepants is there to remind us all that being an adult doesn't mean you have to grow up completely. No matter how grown up you get, you will always be my little baby boy. Number 9. Thanks for Nothing Squidward gets a chance to have his marching band perform at the Bubble Bowl, except he doesn't have a band. He rallies the townsfolk and tries to turn them into a band, and fails miserably. With all hope seemingly lost, Squidward just gives up telling them all not to bother showing up for the big day, and just tearfully says, thanks for nothing. Don't bother showing up tomorrow. I'll just tell them you all died in a marching accident. It's already been established that Squidward is the show's punching bag, but seeing his one chance at happiness crushed is just heartbreaking. However, it makes his triumph at the end all the more deserved when the gang finally comes together to make him proud and perform sweet victory which itself could draw a few happy tears. Number 8. April Fool's Jerk It's April Fool's Day in Bikini Bottom, and Squidward's had enough of SpongeBob's practical jokes. He decides to show the little fry cook a real prank via a spring-loaded trap that sends him flying all over the Krusty Krab before landing in a garbage can. <laughs> Feeling battered and humiliated, SpongeBob runs home with tears in his eyes. And naturally, everyone is disgusted with Squidward's prank. And we can't say we blame them. Come on! Come on! You guys know I was just kidding, right? Oh man, poor kid. All SpongeBob was doing was playing silly, harmless pranks for fun. But a certain cephalopod decided to escalate things and make the little square dude cry. Fortunately, Squidward's conscience forces him to apologize, right before SpongeBob gets a little taste of revenge. But you have to promise not to tell anybody. I promise. Really? <laughs> Number 7. SpongeBob in the Wild SpongeBob has been daydreaming about living among the jellyfish, and decides to prove that he can last more than one day in the wild. His friends all scoff at his decision, except for Patrick who feels utterly betrayed that his best friend basically abandons him. He spends over half the episode in tears, begging his buddy to come home. Patrick said! Meanwhile, SpongeBob learns the hard way that being a jellyfish isn't that great. While it's nice to have a change of scenery sometimes, he had a wonderful life and friends, but he gave it all up just to end up being miserable. Buzz. Buzz. <laughs> Sandy. Fortunately, he comes to his senses and returns to the modern world, and his friends happily welcome him back, even Squidward. Somewhat. Number 6. Squidward's Depression SpongeBob has been trying and failing to find Squidward his happiest memory, but all his attempts only cause more grief for the unhappy cephalopod. Before long, Squidward falls into a heavy depression. He stopped taking care of himself and his house, he doesn't go outside anymore, and he wallows in his own misery. 
Wake me when I'm dead. This hits uncomfortably close to home for those affected by clinical depression. It doesn't help that Squidward's the show's martyr, and the fake-out suicide imagery only makes it more unsettling to sit through. He eventually finds happiness again. After mauling several papier-mâché SpongeBob replicas to death in a psychotic rampage. So SpongeBob did help in some sense. Number 5. Goodbye, Mr. Best Friend SpongeBob and Patrick have been best friends forever. They've even joined the Best Friends Forever Club. However, when Patrick becomes intelligent thanks to some brain coral, their friendship is on the rocks. I know we've had fun in the past, but we're just not compatible anymore. It's time we went our separate ways. Patrick believes that they've just grown apart and have to go their separate ways, which naturally breaks poor SpongeBob's heart. At least Patrick's my friend in my memories. The idea of the dynamic duo splitting up is just too much to bear. Even Patrick regrets his decision as he tearfully looks back at the glory days before his newfound intellect. Thankfully, Patrick quickly learns that knowledge can't replace friendship, and happily gives up his new brain power just to keep his little buddy. Number 4. Sandy's Texas Song Being a squirrel out of water, or underwater in this case, Sandy starts to feel homesick for Texas. She misses her old home so much that she pulls out her guitar and strums out a melancholic country tune. Wish I was back in Texas. The ocean's no place for a squirrel. A song so powerful that anyone who hears it is brought to tears. She almost considers leaving Bikini Bottom until SpongeBob convinces her to stay with a surprise party and her own little slice of Texas. Homemade peas in a can pie, and we got our very own 10 gallon hat. So what do you think? You gonna stay? Anyone who's been plagued with homesickness can relate to Sandy here, but it's important to find a way to make your current residence feel like home. And if Sandy ever had to leave this underwater paradise and all of her friends, it would probably crush her all over again. So long, Bikini Bottom. I can't leave without a goodbye. But please don't think bad of me if and I start to cry. Number 3. This Grill Is Not A Home during Mr. Krabs and Plankton's card game, Krabs foolishly bets SpongeBob's Krusty Krab contract and loses. I'm sorry, boy! <laughs> it's all my fault! After one last cheerful embrace, Krabs is forced to watch his best fry cook get dragged away to work for his arch nemesis at the Chum Bucket, almost like a father and son being separated. This kitchen's not the same without you. Before long, the two engage in singing a somber duet about how much they miss each other. SpongeBob wanting to return to the grill he loves, and Krabs wanting his most loyal employee back. He even says he'd trade it all for him. In the end, SpongeBob's rebellion proves too much for Plankton, and he's happily brought back to the Krusty Krab where he belongs. Number 2. The End of SpongeBob SpongeBob and Patrick are on their most perilous journey to date to retrieve King Neptune's crown and save Mr. Krabs' life. Unfortunately, along the way, a diver abducts them and takes them to his gift shop up on dry land. <laughs> he then sticks them under a heat lamp that slowly dries them out, basically killing them at a snail's pace. This doesn't look too good, Patrick. You mean we're not gonna get the crown, save the town, and Mr. Krabs? I don't even think we're gonna be able to save ourselves, buddy. Lying together side by side, the two goofballs shrivel up and dehydrate, knowing how close they came to finishing their mission. Watching our favorite underwater buddies die in their theatrical debut was just unbearable for longtime fans and moviegoers. But it's nothing the tears of friendship can't do to bring our goofy goobers back to life to save all that they love. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some distressing honorable mentions. You hold too many memories. <laughs> well, Squidward, this is goodbye. Need a hand? Super pal. <laughs> Good to have you back on the side of justice, Kyle. You were right, Squidward. 
This is a stupid holiday. <laughs> Don't you get it? I'm a loser. I've lost my job, my home, everything. <gasps> what did I just get through telling you, lad? But I see. SpongeBob, you're fired. Huh? Bye. <laughs> Number one, Gary runs away. SpongeBob has been so preoccupied with a paddle ball challenge that he forgets to feed his snail Gary. Feeling neglected, Gary runs away, leaving his poor owner feeling guilty, alone, and inconsolable. No, 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 don't do it, Gary! No, Gary! SpongeBob barely held it together when Gary supposedly dumped him for Patrick, but knowing that he unintentionally drove his pet away just crushes him. Patrick! Huh? I can't find Gary! To make matters worse, our eyes are left watering during the Gary Come Home montage as SpongeBob desperately searches for his beloved snail mixed with flashes of him lamenting during the saddest song of the series. Your meow right now would sound like music to me. Please come home, cause I miss you, Gary. Thankfully, like most of the entries on this list, there is a happy ending. But any pet owner will agree that driving away your animal companion is the worst feeling ever. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.